Some big news last week was that Vercel acquired Nux Labs, a company led by Sebastian Chopin, one of the original creators of Nux, that plays a big role in the Nux and Nitro ecosystem. And as the LearnView channel and a big Nux user, obviously I have some thoughts on this. So in this video, let's learn exactly what happened, what Vercel gets out of it, why I think it's actually good for Nux and Nux Labs, and then some of my other takeaways. First, Nux Labs is not Nux. To understand how all these pieces fit together, let's take a look at a timeline of Nux history. In October 2016, Next.js was released. And then a few weeks later, inspired by Next, were the initial commits that became Nux. In 2018, version 1 and version 2 released, and the version 3 rewrite began in 2020. And if you reviewed dev back then, you remember this release taking a lot of time, but the reason the development went so long is also one of the reasons why Nux is such a big player in the web space today. They realized that a lot of the tools they were developing for Nux could help developers outside of the ecosystem. These tools became the whole UnJS world. This includes things like C12 for configuration, H3 for things like event handlers. And the most impactful one is Nitro, which takes your web servers and lets you deploy them to a ton of different providers. So all of this just added to the entire rewrite, and the stable version of Nux 3 was released in 2022. And it's around 2021 and 22 when Sebastian, the original creator of Nux, made Nux Labs, a company built to try and sustainably fund Nux development. They've built different products over the years, but I think the coolest one for the overall Nux vision was Nux Hub. And then that brings us to today, where Vercel just acquired Nux Labs. But what exactly does Vercel own now? Well, previously, there was Nux Labs, and Nux and Nitro were independent open source projects. The relationship is that Nux Labs would fund individual developers like Daniel, Puya, and Anfu to work on Nux and Nitro. Russell acquired Nux Labs and its whole team and hired some of these key contributors to continue working on these projects full time. But importantly, Nux and Nitro stay independent. It's kind of similar to what Vercel did with Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte, where they hired him to work on Svelte full time. So why would Vercel do this? One obvious answer is that they get some of the most talented people in web dev. Their products are impactful way beyond just the view space. So having them under the same roof as some of the other smart people at Vercel is probably gonna come up with a lot of ideas to push the web forward. And the second reason is that Vercel's goal is to be the best way to deploy web apps, not just next apps. Hiring Puya, the Nitro lead, is a great move because of how many frameworks are built on top of Nitro. There's Tanstack Start, Nux, Solid Start, and if Vercel is a great platform for them, they're diversified from Next.js. Below key, one of the pieces I'm most hyped about is Nuxtub. While the hosted service is going away, Nuxtub Core was a complete backend experience built on top of Cloudflare. It'll let you do things like add a single database value to your configuration, and it would handle all of the deployment for you. Then in your code, you could just use something like hub database, and then just like that, you have access to your database client. The developer experience for this was amazing. You didn't have to worry about rigging up things like your database, blob storage, KV storage, all together with your app, everything just worked. The vision felt a lot like Laravel, where you have big building blocks for things like database or auth built into your tool. And in the announcement blog post, Sebastian said that they're going to make this core agnostic to support other providers. When you add the fact that Vercel has a ton of native integrations and connectable accounts, it's easy to see how an agnostic Nux Hub core can slowly become the standard way in Nux to connect to your different services. The Vercel connection can become even crazier when you take into account V0, their AI app builder. If you have a ton of services you can integrate to and a unified API to connect to them, it's a great match for AI tools because it doesn't have to learn provider specific code, but instead it just has to learn Nux sub core and it can work in your app. And I think Nux in general is just pretty AI friendly. While we're on the topic of AI, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, AI Driven Development. This masterclass is put on by a ton of great developers and will cover everything you need to know to use AI in your development workflows. And they just released their pre-launch deal for the next day or so. You not only get 50% off, but you get early access to all content, live events, and you can help shape their curriculum. And looking at the roadmap, it covers a ton of real world important issues like code reviews, testing, and even building your own MCP. So if you want that discount, click the link in the description and become an AI driven development insider. Okay, so we covered some of the big ideas from the Vercel side, but why do I think this is good for Nuxt? The biggest one is stable funding. Nux long-term sustainability needed Nux Labs to make money so it could keep supporting developers to work on it full time. And this was a journey for Nux Labs. They built things like Volta, a GitHub issue manager, Nux Studio, a CMS for Nux content, Nux UI and Nux UI Pro, and then finally Nux Hub. But it's just really hard to compare that to the type of stable funding a big company like Vercel can give. But what this means is that the Nux Labs team no longer has to focus on selling products themselves. These three products are all becoming free and open source. 
and the team's energy can be focused on creating great developer experiences. And I think another good thing for Nux is that they can potentially have access to a way bigger audience, especially if the V0 integrations work out nicely. I think there will be some people that have Vercel as their gateway to Nux. So now to my big takeaways. Vercel will 100% be the best way to deploy Nux apps, but I don't think this is bad. It'll be better because of some of those more Nux up features that have a really seamless integration with something like Vercel, which already has pretty good DX. And also, the Nux team can shape Vercel infrastructure to better suit Nux apps, which is something Daniel mentioned in his GitHub post. But you'll still be able to deploy to all the different providers. And honestly, with Nux Tub becoming agnostic, meaning you can use it on any Nux app, your experience probably gets better. The biggest concern I see is that Vercel will next js defy Nux with server components, app directors, and things like that. I just don't buy it. Nux is still 100% independent, with the same governance, and half of the core team doesn't work at Vercel, including Alex Lichter, who made a great video covering this acquisition. Will there be just generic Vercel influence in some of the core teams working there? Probably. But I think the larger fear is that there will be core features that basically only work on Vercel. I think the team has earned the trust that they'll do right by the community, and the adapter-based approach of Nitro means that I don't think this is going to happen. I will confidently say that there won't be a need for Open Next, similar to Open Next. Even Evan Yu, who's not the biggest Vercel fan, is optimistic about this. So if you don't trust me, trust him instead. I think Svelte here is an excellent comparison because Vercel hired Rich Harris to work on it full-time, and they've done a great job just letting that project breathe. But as for what actually happens, only time will tell. But I'm looking forward to it. And once some of these new features drop, I'm going to cover them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.